uh, consciousness rise in Zimbabwe and beyond. And uh, your host today is Antonella Bertone. And, <laughs> and uh, as you know, at Consciousness Rising, we have got the pleasure to invite people like Mertha Nyamande, who are making a real difference to their audience. And um, so he's one of them. So Mertha Bo Nyamande. Thank you very you much. You're very, very welcome to be here. Metamonia Mande is an integrative psychotherapist and a psychological trauma specialist. So in 98, you started with training in UK mental health. Yeah. In mental health. And there you worked with the criminal insane and secure hospitals. So that's the start. <laughs> At the same time... Baptism of fire, you can call it. Baptism of fire, yes. okay. <laughs> At the same time, while you were trained in uh, psychotherapies, you worked with adults in the community before we, you started to work with children and families. Yes. Mm. Then you further trained in trauma and complex grief, mm -hmm. which led you to work in 2012 with the UK military. Mm -hmm. And there you specialized it. You specialized in treating trauma. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And uh, alongside this work, you worked with trauma with the civilian adult population. Mm. In 2020, you felt you had gained enough experience to return home to help your fellow Zimbabweans. And not only after, I mean, and not only because you work online uh, yeah. whenever it's needed, Absolutely. after 23 years of absence yes and in that covid gave you some help <laughs> it pushed me yes. over the edge i must say so as you can hear we've got the uh, uh, i mean the, your experience is really uh, how would you call it extensive maybe mm. but um you know you know, when you're doing all these things, as you look back, as I'm looking back now, when you start to do these things, you actually don't realize what you're doing until much later when you're sitting on a platform like this and you're like, did I really do all that? <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand what you're you know? saying because I started the same way. And, um, you know, Antonella, there is much more that we, we do but it's difficult to put everything on paper and say, I've done this. Especially when we're talking about these kind of introductions. We could spend pretty much the first half an hour just talking about my experience. But um, what's critical is how unconscious we are at most times mm. that we end up doing things unknowingly unconsciously and only after we then realize that oh this this is what this meant you know so I actually found it quite interesting and um, an honor when you invited me to talk about this on um, Connect, connected consciousness. Consciousness rising. Consciousness which is rising. A, which is a way to connect yeah. consciousness Abs as well. Absolutely. Because, you know, this is the biggest problem that we have in our communities at the moment, in our societies. People are just on autopilot. Yeah. They're just going wherever the wind blows them to go. And it's only when they crash, they start looking at, oh, who's made me crash? But all along they were not even aware of where they were or where they were going. So, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. You're so welcome. And, and that, I mean, at the moment we are in, in a space uh, in this time, and especially in Zimbabwe, where mental health is like on everybody's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> lips mouth everybody's talking about mental health 
and then you don't really know what's happening on the ground because it seems like almost I feel like people feel that there is something that they need to change and yet the instruments they're, they're searching for an instrument Absolutely. and yet I don't know if there is tra training enough that can support that uh, so please so you know what uh, Antonella the idea of mental health especially in Zimbabwe is something that um, we have neglected essentially it's always been there the fact that we are talking about it now is only because we are in a crisis okay. we are a very reactive community we do not proactively address issues we wait until the house is on fire and then we run mm. looking for um, buckets and water to put the fire out and there's not much water at the moment exactly <laughs> <laughs> so that's a serious dilemma that we yeah. have but if we actually sat back and we anticipated where we're going and we we could actually avoid a lot of the problems that our communities are suffering right now what's worse is if you start selling tomatoes down your street the rest of the street by the end by the end of the week are going to start selling tomatoes and this is what maybe the flavor of the month or whatever it is that seems to be making money in that moment that's what people tend to do and this is why you're finding everybody uh, you know I find it quite interesting that even people who know very little about mental health they're calling themselves mental health advocates mm. You know, what I find interesting, the idea of an advocate is actually somebody who knows enough to stand in and argue for a case. Lawyers are advocates. Yeah. They've studied law in order to defend you or in order to prosecute you, with whatever mm. the case. But if everybody who calls themselves an advocate especially in mental health simply because they've had depression or they've tried to commit suicide at some point and now they feel because of that experience they can call themselves an advocate because they're passionate about telling them uh, telling other people what they've done okay yeah but what's <coughs> what's sad about that as much as I find people's stories powerful, what's often said about when we keep talking about the struggles that we've gone through without understanding how we can come out the other end, we actually create a situation where we're probably saying it's okay to struggle. We're actually normalizing the idea of suffering, mm -hmm. which is not normal, actually. You know? Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, different. Yeah. Let me let me let me just explain that a little. Um, we look at uh, the life that we live as a constant struggle, mm -hmm. but. Um, I've, I've learned to understand life as like a problem-solving exercise, if you like. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Everything that we do in life is about problem-solving. True. You wake up in the morning, you're faced with a problem ahead of you the whole day. What am I going to do with it? Where am I going to start? You know? Mm -hmm. That's a problem. How do I solve it? Oh. I've got a job to go to, uh, so that's going to take part of my time, and uh, I've got kids to look after, and that's going to take part of my time, and I've got other things to do that is also going to take part of my time. But um, with all that, we, we rarely 
actually understand that all those things are problems. We just need to have enough resources and understanding and support to be able to address all those problems or solve all those problems. Make a choice. Cho choices, choices are, are finite. Okay. And to a certain extent, <coughs> I've heard the word preordained at some point. Okay. Why I say this? Our choices um, are largely or have already been made for us in most cases. In that our formative years, when we are younger and we are being told all these things and we are being shown all these things and we are being exposed to all these things, Essentially, that's how our choices are actually being made. And this is where the idea of consciousness comes in. Am I conscious why I got into this job in the first place? Did I get into it for the money or did I get into it knowingly or did I just stumbled into it? Okay, so a lot of the time there is an unconscious bias to things that we do. I'm going to stop you a moment. So, I, when you talk about the formative, the formative years, is it because we, without us knowing, uh, we have been put in the mold according to our parents? I mean, Absolutely. just to clarify for our Absolutely. viewers. So, you will find, I'll give you a typical example. Um, if your mother had fear, a fear of spiders, yeah. okay, you will find majority of the time you're also going to have a fear of spiders. Yeah. You don't even know why you have a fear of spiders. Yeah. You don't, your mother might not even know why she has a, sp a fear of spiders herself. Or maybe she had a very bad experience with spiders. Why, that's why she has a fear of spiders. Yeah. So that's we call it classical conditioning. Okay. Okay? Where we learn things without being conscious that we're actually learning things. And then we have um, an alternative way of learning, which is what we call um, operant conditioning, where I ask you to go to school, go and learn whatever it is you've got to learn or I tell you to do things in a certain way. You're actually learning that way and I'm repeating it over and over again. I am teaching you and you're conscious that you're being taught, mm -hmm. okay? So those are two very different ways that we learn things. But the first six years of our lives, okay? We are absorbing a lot of these learning unconsciously. Yeah, okay. we are like sponges. We are sponges. We are sponging everything yeah. in. Yeah. And um, we're not even conscious that we are seeing how dad wakes up in the morning and puts on a tie and goes to work and how mom um, takes care of our meals and all sorts of things. We're not conscious that we are learning that, yeah. but we actually are learning that. So by the time you become conscious, by the time you become, um, by the time you get about seven, you start to become conscious. Mm -hmm. You start to be, uh, to have a bit of an understanding of, oh, okay. We have gone through this thing here where we just been exposed to all these things. Now, what does that mean for us? Right. So you find that by that time, if by the time you get to six, you have been well supported, you have been allowed to express yourself, you will find that you have a strong sense of self, a good self-esteem, you are confident, okay? But if you had parents who were not present, mm -hmm emotionally or physically, or you had parents who were very 
oppressive. They wanted you to do things a certain way. It's their way. You're not allowed to, to, to think or to tell them what you feel. You're going to grow up with a sense of lack as far as your personality is concerned. I'm not allowed to be myself. Yeah. Okay? The rest of life, you're going to live with that at the back of your mind. Any opportunity that's thrown your way, you're going to judge it versus how you feel about yourself. Am I good enough? Mm -hmm. Can I express myself? So all those things shape where we end up and how we feel about ourselves. Okay. Yeah. And the capacity for ourselves to see in a different position or that we can reach a different position than what has been designed without us knowing exactly. for us. Exactly. That's where the frustration comes in. <laughs> yeah? Because naturally, we are created to develop, to flourish. Yeah. Yeah? We are created to be amazing beings. But this mold that we've been forced into is what gets us frustrated to say, but I should be doing more than what I'm doing. And why am I not? And this is where all these ideas of depression, anxiety, and disorders come from. Because the core being wants to be free from all these negative uh, ideas that our parents, our grandparents, our societies normalize. Mm -hmm. I want to talk especially about Zimbabwe history, for example. Mm -hmm. When you look back, um, a lot of what our parents went through wasn't normal. It was oppression. It was um, abuse. It was very painful experiences. Yeah. Now, when you go through something like that, and you then have children yourself. The moment you, be, you become a parent, you're not going to lose all that, exp all that negative experience that you went through. You are going to carry it through, through this little being that you've just brought into this world. So a lot of what we we're talking about in terms of that operant conditioning and that classical conditioning is based on the fear, the oppression, the pain that granddad went through. Granddad becomes abusive to his family and this child doesn't know any different. This child thinks yeah. this is normal. Yes. Okay? Because children are <coughs> Up molds that we navigate around in our societies. So if we show them that pain is normal, it will be normal. It will be normal. Mm -hmm. And they are going to defend it as normal. They are going to believe it as normal. So these are some of the problems that the idea of consciousness I find amazing the word struggle is still uh, in the current dictionary. It's the struggle continue and it's still the language coming from the war. Yeah. It hasn't gone away. Exactly, it because that yeah. trauma has yeah. not been resolved. Yeah. So what we keep doing is we keep passing it on and on and on. Yeah. So this is where we come in, Antonella. Uh, I find I find a position that I'm I mean quite a privileged position. It's not that I do not have problems in my life or I'm not exposed to anxieties yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and all sorts of things. But um, 
what I've learned over the years has helped me to understand where we at as a people and why especially okay we are on a very downward trajectory as far as how all that trauma take it as far back as you want uh, I wouldn't even start at slavery because slavery took advantage of something that was already going on uh, the way the Shaga Zulu <coughs> dealt with the people and you you could be killed simply because the, the, the king has died and he, he needs 60 virgins to die with him. You know, those things. Imagine if your daughter or your son is being killed in front of you just to escort the king wherever he is going to. Mm -hmm. How does that leave you feeling as a mother, as a father? Yeah? So the idea of trauma has been going on for too long, way too long, for us to keep thinking it's okay or it will go away somehow. It will somehow disappear. No, it won't. Because unless we become conscious, and this is where I am quite passionate about wanting to conscientize our people mm. to understand what it is that they have normalized. Mm. To understand that whatever it is that they have grown up with is not normal and it shouldn't be happening. I speak especially when, whenever I speak to a lot uh, uh, certain crowds, I, I like to bring the controversial idea of um, should children be bitten or not? Mm. <laughs> you know? And I find a lot of parents fight very passionately that yes, children should be bitten. Okay. And yeah. the reason for that is because of how they were bitten. They are passing on the trauma, the pain, the distress that they went through as they were growing up. So there is almost a loyalty to our, to the way you have been brought up. Yes. So that if you are not loyal to those uh, ways, yeah. you betray your clan. Absolutely. I Absolutely. mean, clan, family, Absolutely. whatever group you belong to. You, you've, you've actually said it the best way possible. Even, even now, when you th it, it, a lot of people think, oh my God, I couldn't possibly do this. My mother told, taught me to do it this way. I couldn't possibly do it any other way. Mom is dead 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But I should still do it the way she taught me. If I do it any different, she could turn in a grave. What would that mean if she turned in a grave? Okay? So, there is something powerful about our parents mm -hmm. okay yeah um i talk i talk about god in the way that um, i talk about god as a concept what i'm trying to say is the power that our parents have. If we conscious enough, we realize that that's the power that we attribute to God. Okay? If you look at your parents as people who are loving, kind, caring, that's the same thinking that you're going to equate with whenever we, you think about God. But if you think of your parents as harsh, punitive, you're going to think, if I don't do what God wants, I am going to hell. I'm going to be punished. So we have to understand these concepts in a way that we start to realize what is actually going on around us. A lot of the things that we call spirit, 
we call um, yeah, especially spirit. I'd like to invite you to think about it. In this very moment, I would say there is a spirit mm -hmm. between us. Okay. Okay. And um, to explain the spirit, I want to introduce you to the idea of psychological dynamics. We call them dynamics in psychology. Okay. When you put two people together, mm -hmm. there is going to be an exchange. Even w before they even start talking to each other, there is going to be an exchange yeah. from yeah. how my body mm. speaks to your body and your body responds to my body. I haven't even said a word to you yet. But our bodies have already started communicating. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah. That um, non-verbal communication that is happening is sometimes what we, what is misunderstood as spirit. Okay? Why I say that is by the time you sit down and say hello to someone, yes. there's already been a much bigger conversation that's, heard, that's been had between, yeah. between the yeah. two of you. Yeah. Whether I like you or not, whether we, you are going to agree with me or not, yeah. you already know that before I even start talking to you. True. Yeah? But because we are not conscious, this is where the issue is because we are not conscious of what is actually going on non-verbally mm. the things that we do not understand we resign them to the mystic okay yeah we are afraid of the things that we do not understand mm -hmm. that's the biggest drive for most people the things that we don't know, mm. we become fearful of them. Yeah, the unseen, yes. Yeah? Yes, yes the unseen. So, yeah. once you make it mis uh, mysterious, yes. it becomes heavy, it becomes yes. um, something that we should be afraid of and we do not question. And therefore, we give the power to someone else Absolutely. who can use that knowledge uh, against uh, you see what's yeah, going on here yeah, so we actually give up our power without actually realizing what we're doing yes this is part of the biggest dilemma that we have and this is why the idea of people being more conscious helps us be able to direct our lives I could turn around and say, oh, my life is terrible and I, uh, I'm very unlucky or uh, the spirits, uh, uh, whatever is going it's on. It's always outside. It's always outside. <laughs> yes. I'm always blaming someone else for my own deeds, my, pro my problems. Yes. But I don't realize that I have surrendered yeah. my will to someone else without knowing so. this is where the idea of consciousness comes yes. in I'm not conscious that I'm doing it yes. so I go around blaming everyone that they've taken advantage of me they've done this to me they've done that to me but I've allowed them to mm. there is a there's a, there's a saying that no one does anything to you or no one has the power to make you upset without allowing them to. Yeah? yeah. If someone comes and says, Mertha, you're useless, I have to agree with that for me to be upset. Yeah. I have to allow them to make me upset. Yeah. But if I am not conscious of myself mm. and what is going on around me, whatever Antonella says or does is going to upset me. 
because I'm not aware that I'm actually allowing her to. Well, for me, we could go in a total different conversation, <laughs> really, because it's a bit of a catch-22 and the loop that... To it is. I mean... It is. Yeah. I'm glad you, you, you realize that. So, this is where all this goes back to the pain and the trauma that people are holding on to. Okay? They have been handed over things that they do not understand, that they are yeah. not conscious of, yeah. and they're carrying them. Yes. And they don't know how far they have to carry them till. And this is where the idea of suffering continues. Yeah. Yeah? But the moment you realize and understand that, actually, I don't have to carry this. It's not mine to carry. <laughs> it's someone's pain that I don't even understand where it came from. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you very much. I've carried it long enough, but thank you very much. I'm just going to put it down now. Yeah? yeah? The moment we realize this, we free ourselves from a lot of pain, from a lot of hurt, and a lot of distress. So, this is what the idea of these workshops that we run is about to yeah. try and help people become more conscious of what is it that they are really doing that is inviting this bad omen around them yeah okay that is making them vulnerable to being taken advantage of by anyone or everyone else yeah, because for that one, uh, uh, you, I have got a, a small part in it. You run the family and relationship uh, relationships workshop, and then the trauma informed care yes. workshops, and that's, all m I mean, mostly for people who are already in the field, like counselors. Uh, can be for everybody, but mostly directed to people who are working in the field. Of of so, uh, so these workshops, I, I find it quite interesting, especially when the counselors come. Yes. They actually find themselves struggling in that. Okay? They actually find that, oh, I didn't realize I'm traumatized. <laughs> right. I came here to learn how to help my client learn how to deal with their trauma but most of the time the guys who come in actually realize they've got a lot of trauma that they're carrying yeah yeah so this is not really about uh, professionals counselors psychologists doctors this is about the human being well, without trauma, that trauma person, I mean, that's part of our life path, yes. trauma, it's not something we can avoid it. It's about, it's for everyone who wants to understand themselves mm -hmm. and understand yes. the relational depth and this is where the family yeah. and relationships come in. You know, when you bring two people together, especially uh, on a personal level, yes. they will start to realize that, oh, she's not as perfect as I thought she was, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he's not as perfect as I thought he was from, from the distance, mm. right? The moment you get into that personal space and we start to realize that I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, we start to think, uh, I don't like her anymore. She's not as perfect as I thought she was from two, two meters away. Yeah. yeah. So all those things are some of the things that we need to, to understand. What does that mean when I get into a relationship with you? And almost always, we start to struggle the moment we get to know each other better. What's that about? <laughs> yeah? It's, a, 
it's about what you are carrying and bringing in more than it is about the other person yeah you may look at the other person and say oh he talks too much or he's a, uh, uh, he, he uses drugs or uh, he's aggressive but do you know what mm. the most important part of this whole thing mm. is what you bring to that yeah and also what the, uh, what made me choose the person who abused drugs exactly I mean exactly why am I finding myself always in this situation absolutely Absolutely. And so this, yeah. Yeah. So you may then find that when you look further down the line, you find the last three guys that you have dated or the last three girls you have dated, you kept on leaving them thinking they have this problem without recognizing that you are actually the constant element in this situation. Yeah. So we need to understand mm. what we are carrying and bringing to the party okay? yeah otherwise we keep repeat repeat that's, repeat, that's repeat. what we do that's what we do we think this and what's 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 even mm. more fascinating is when you leave this person and you go to the next person you find that other person is probably worse than the person you left that's almost always yeah, because life gives you the opportunity <laughs> to <Absolutely>. see it. Yes. <laughs> and so it becomes bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. So when, when, we, when we are looking at these workshops, we are looking to help people regain control. Mm -hmm. Okay? I cannot control you. Okay? Neither can I control the next person who comes my way. But the only thing that I can control is myself. The moment I let go of the control that I have myself to try and control you, I lose control of myself. Sure. Yeah? So, it's about me being able to control myself. Say, huh, okay. What do I have power to do? Mm. What can I do differently in yeah. this situation so that I can help this person? so that I can work with this person but you also have to understand that that person may be carrying something that they're not ready to let go yeah, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and it's about often especially with relationships and families it's about understanding that as much as they're holding on to something they're not ready to let go it may be very painful for them to be holding on to that thing but they need to feel that if I let go of this this person is still going to be there for me yeah. we fear abandonment so much that we hold on to a burning coal yeah. in our hands simply because we that's the only sure thing that we have yeah, yeah? so when we become aware of what we are holding on to mm. and what we could potentially have, we start to regain control. We start to understand the freedom that we could have. It requires lots of courage. A lot of courage, a lot of patience, a lot of commitment yeah. actually because you may then find that oh this person doesn't want to change so I'm going to leave them you've worsened the abandonment not only for them but also for yourself hmm. so it requires commitment knowing that yes we are struggling today but tomorrow we're going to be okay what about a situation where you move away, you decide to move away just for your own, of course, safety? Mm -hmm. Or because, I mean, you did your best, but then the person doesn't really 
doesn't have interest in changing or uh, better themselves or whatever. Yeah. And then it's about choosing between your own life and theirs. And theirs. Or the rela- in the name of the of relationship. The so, you know, we talk about triggers. Uh, yes, I very mean, <laughs> well know that word. Yeah. yeah. We talk about triggers that uh. this person triggers me. Yes. So I'm going to leave them. Yes. What are they triggering you to? I know my triggers. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 where, <laughs> where are they triggering you to? Yeah. yeah. So it's not about the trigger. Mm. The trigger is just a trigger. Yeah, a trigger. <laughs> yeah. But it's the ammunition that you're carrying that is going to explode. Tell us okay. something more. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I trigger you, yes. I'm triggering you to a time in your life yes. that you are uncomfortable with, that you have not resolved. Yes. Okay. That is painful for you. I don't know that. Yeah. Maybe the trigger that I am to you is, I look like your father. Mm-hmm. Or I speak like him. Yeah. And that's your trigger. Yes. Okay? I can't help that. Yeah? So often we want to walk away from our triggers. Because it's our pains in the end. Because they take mm-hmm. us to our mm-hmm. pains. pains yes. But that's what's supposed to happen. That's the point. That's the point of growth. Exactly. Possibly, exactly. So exactly. Because if you're not triggered to that point, that point is going to continuously burn you True. okay as much as you hide it away it's burning you yes. so if I trigger you to it I am reminding you that Antonella there is this thing that you need Still to address need to be seen. you know yeah. so if it's something that you struggle with perhaps we can work together mm-hmm. to tackle it it becomes easier if you've got someone to go to a fight with. Yes. Yeah? Yes. It makes it easier to walk down that dark alley. Yes. Because yes. there is someone else there with you. Yeah. Yeah? So that's usually the idea when mm. people talk about triggers. Yeah. Triggers are not bad things. Mm. Where you're being pointers. triggered to is where you, what you need to focus on. Yeah, they're pointers. Yeah. Where am I being triggered to? And what's there? How do I feel about it? So all these things are critical for us to enjoy our lives, for us to be able to connect with the next person. Yeah. Now, the dilemma with that is it, because I've got this trigger, yes. this issue that yes. I have inside me, that makes it difficult to connect with myself. Yeah? What chances do you think I have to connect with you? If I can't connect with myself, none. What chances do I have to connect with you? Yeah? Yeah. You will have your pain, I'll have my pain. I can't connect with me, you can't connect with you, and we think we can have a relationship. No, we even bounce your my pain, (laughs) I bounce it onto you. Absolutely. We start projecting. And this is where we start to have problems in our relationships. Mm. And this is what we try to highlight and help people understand. Especially when uh, we do the relationship workshops. That's what we look at. And the trauma workshops is really about helping people to understand the traumas that they have experienced and haven't dealt with because they didn't know how so they just parked them at the back of their minds up until they knew better yeah yes yeah but now that they are older and perhaps they have the opportunity to know better they are not using that opportunity to deal with that issue because they're thinking oh well it happened when I was 16 so it doesn't matter I'll take it to my to the grave with me 
without understanding that packing up all this experience because of the rain, then without knowing you pass it on generationally Absolutely. to your children Absolutely. or grandchildren. Absolutely. I mean, this has been documented uh, everywhere. At some point, a grandchild end up behaving like the grandfather who never know, exactly. knew. Exactly. Who never knew. Exactly. And then people say, oh, then we need to do a ceremony to appease uh, uh, the grandfather this or is whatever it is. This is where we are. Yeah, it's, um, it's so simple and yet so foreign so complicated. Uh, and complicated <laughs> and layered. <laughs> the, the layered is a word that I yeah. like to use because it's really layered. It I is. Mean, it's, it it's is. A, yeah. Trauma comes in loads of layers. Um, especially when we talk in the in the trauma workshop, we talk about the very first trauma that we experience, yeah. the trauma of birth. <coughs> yes. A lot of people don't actually think of birth as traumatic. It is but huge. It is a huge issue. Mother goes through a lot of pain and suffering. Yes. Baby also. Yes. Because already in that point, he's already or she's already a being. Yes. And going through experiences. So that moment where that baby turns blue in the face, that's a near-death experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. When we talk about near-death experience to an adult, someone who's conscious, you know what that means. I almost died. I almost lost my life. Yeah. How you deal with that? Imagine, now imagine a baby who doesn't even know how to speak and how to express themselves have had a near-death experience. Yeah. How long are they going to carry that for? But, but in fact, there is a lot of literacy there where according to the way your, bo your birth was, mm -hmm. there is an imprint on your behaviors in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's what uh, we're talking about. Yeah. That's where we're talking about the trauma of birth. Yeah. And <coughs> critically, uh, the support that you then get may either help you cope better mm. or make you struggle more yes okay yeah. so bringing the trauma informed concept mm -hmm. helps us become more aware of these issues yeah and know what we can do about them. and start to ask questions because that's the first the beginning of the change absolutely yeah ask questions get the right help yeah. there is help out there we have learned through experience through learning as well mm. we have learned that these things can be managed they can be dealt with they can be processed they can be put to bed yeah. in fact did you know that our trauma carry our biggest strengths? Yeah, in, in, in Chinese they've got the same character for crisis and solution. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our trauma yeah. carry the most power. Yeah. So if we don't deal with that trauma, we're actually neglecting that power. We're, not, we're never going to use it. The way I look at it is, in the moment that there is trauma, a part of our power, personal power, yeah. just fades away, fades away. Absolutely. So, by re-looking and solving and re acknowledging, seeing, mm. acknowledging, embracing mm. and releasing, then all that energy which has been blocked, all that power which we have lost, we we regain, bring it, yeah, we, we bring regain, it back to us. and we feel more powerful, and we can do much more. Yes. Okay, and we're more available. Yes. To the people we care about. Yes, we are present. We get more present. Exactly. Yeah. We are not triggered mm. 
<laughs> to those places, to those painful places, yeah. and get stuck there because it's difficult. Yeah. So there was one question, but I I leave uh, our viewers with a <laughs> with a, a bit of as a teaser because I'm so curious to hear your experience with the UK army. That must have been quite something. But for re for time reason reason of time, we I should we should have another. Yeah, we can have another conversation. Another later conversation on. about can, that. Yeah. Um, and and also to see how from there we can learn also from in Zimbabwe. I'm sure that there is quite a lot of to talk. <laughs> to talk I'm even <laughs> overwhelmed just thinking about it. Yeah, There's yeah, just yeah. way too much. Yeah way yes. way too much yeah so before we leave our listeners uh, or viewers uh, would you like to add something on the workshop so the the family and relationship workshop is going to be on saturday the 8th of june no? yes the 8th this of weekend. june yes from no the 10th of june the 10th the 10th sorry the, the 10th, 10th of june, june. Yeah. the 10th of june yeah. from uh, 9 to 3 yes. would you like to add anything on that um, just, just to say, you know, I can't encourage people enough to, to come to these workshops, um, for them to uh, really understand what's going on. But once you do, you will find your life will never be the same. Mm -hmm. We call these life-changing experiences and moments because they are. The moment you understand where your power is, you're never going to be the same person again. Yeah. Yeah. So, those who can come, please do. Yes, I'll put all the uh, all the details in the description of the video, so Absolutely. they can look there. Absolutely. And and then uh, on the weekend of 23rd, 24th, and 25th, is a three full days. Yeah. It's quite packed. <laughs> Quite packed. That's, That's where we get into the trauma of things, and yes, yes that we really get into the trauma. The, on the relationship, we're just talking about the dynamics mm -hmm. and how we can navigate around the dynamics. Yes. But we don't really get into the trauma as much as we do on the twenty-third uh, to the twenty-fifth, because we've got more time to unpack the trauma to help people know how to manage those traumas. Yes. So you're going to give uh, tips on how, I don't know, even things that we can do when we get triggered. Absolutely. And, uh, yes. Absolutely. I that, that's, that's the beauty of it. We're not just giving you information. We're actually walking with you so you actually experience it yourself in the workshop. What does it feel like when we ask you to do this? So you go home knowing what it feels like, not just knowing what it is. We are emotional beings. Yes. And majority of the time, our emotions drive our behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if we don't know how to manage our emotions, we are in trouble. Okay. Yeah? So. Yeah. Once you can manage your emotions, you find it's much easier to navigate around around situations. So please do, if you can make time, please do come um, and experience it for yourself. Yeah, I'll do there the family constellation part uh, one afternoon just to see how the intergenerational trauma works uh, within families and systems as well. Absolutely. So, Mehta, thank you very much for today, for your contribution to our channel. I still feel there is much more we should talk about. There will be. There will be. Yes. We haven't even talked about some of the things that we were hoping to talk about, but time is never yeah. on our side, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it will happen. Thank you very much thank for having me. Thank you very me. much. Thank you very much to all of you. And uh, till next time. Please come to the workshop. <laughs>